Welcome to Working with Clips in Reason 8. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So within Reason, there are several different types of clips. You have um, block automation clips, which I'll go into to in more detail in a video that I'll do on block, working with blocks in Reason. Then you have note clips, which contain MIDI and performance controller events performance controller events such as mod wheel and uh, the pitch wheel. Then you have parameter automation clips, audio clips, and pattern automation clips. So in the sequencer tracks, looking over here in the track list, the individual tracks here are kind of at the, the top top level. You then have lanes within the track. So we've got a lane here that has MIDI information, then we have a lane that has parameter automation. So you have the track, then you have the lane, then you have clips that are situated in, in these lanes and the clips contain events. Uh, in this particular case, in the MIDI clip here, we have MIDI note events. They, uh, if I escape out of here, the audio clip, this is the audio clip here, this contains audio data. And if I double click, I get the inline editor. Uh, this lane here has a parameter automation clip, and that just has parameter events here. The events are the, these actual dots that you hear, see here that you can adjust. Now you can tell parameter automation clips by the top right corner being cut off like so there. I'll zoom in a bit. So you can see that as an indicator and you know that it's a parameter automation clip. For audio clips, you actually do have several different type. This is a single take clip, you can tell because there's no indicator here at the bottom. But if I were to right click and reverse that clip, you see we now have these two parallel bars. That lets you know that this is a single take clip, but there is audio on another comp row in this clip that is not being used. So what does that mean? Well, if I double click, open in the comp editor, or I'll escape out, be sure your audio clip is selected, and control E, and you go directly to the comp editor. See, this is our original audio here that plays forward normally. This, then, is the reversed audio. And so this button being selected means that it's in single take mode. If I were to deselect it, now we're out of single take mode. So if I escape out, that's why you then have these two parallel bars, because there's more than one audio clip in here, but it's still in single take mode. Now, if I were to come in and bring up the razor tool here, First, I need to deselect single take mode. Now the razor tool is active. If I click up top here in the audio that's not being used, so now we're using that last part from using the razor tool. This is going to be now a comp mode clip. So if I escape out, then you're going to notice we have several dots, and that indicates a comp mode clip. So those are the three types of audio clips that you have. I'm just going to control Z to get back to where we were, Q for the selection tool. Next we have pattern automation clips. So at the bottom here I have a redrum track here and I have recorded some automation. I'm essentially changing the the uh, patterns 
while recording live on the Red Drum. So with pattern automation clips, what you can do is in the upper left hand corner, you can tell by this A2 and that arrow that you have there. So you can choose, click on the arrow and you then have a menu where you can choose the different pattern that you would like to use in this clip. So if I F6 and go to the rack, let's go to the redrum and you can see that we've got the green border here, meaning that there is active automation. If I were to select a pattern and then right click and choose copy pattern to, to track, I'll F7. See, we now have that pattern in this lane. And if I double click, you see we have the MIDI notes, MIDI events. This is different than the automation. So the I'm going to delete what we just copied. That is one way that you can get the, your patterns into the sequencer. And it will play back the Red Drum sounds that way. But what I did here, because I wanted to show you the example of the pattern automation clips, was I recorded this live. So let's just play this back. see we have our green border back and so I could change this to pattern 2 just like so now as far as working with clips in the sequencer let me go ahead and zoom out a bit the clips can be uh, copied, of course. You can accomplish that by selecting a clip and hitting Control D. Um, I'm going to G and shrink that out. You can also hit hold down Control and drag. That will then create another clip. Now, if you've created these, one other cool thing you can do with the clips, uh, you can select these if I hold down shift and hit the left arrow. You see I can then select those like that. And you can also, I'll control C and then control V. So you can copy and paste just the same as in any, any other program. You can also cut uh, Control X and Control V. Also, by right clicking, you can copy, paste, or cut. When you are moving the clips, they will be affected by whatever your snap value is. So, if I were to say raise this to my snap value to bar, then you can see it jumps by bar. I'll hit H to zoom out a bit. So you can see we jump by bar. I'll drop down to 16th notes and you can see it looks like it pretty much moves freely. If you'd like free movement just hit S, turn off. The snap is now off by hitting S and you can move it freely. Another cool thing that you can do when working with clips is, uh, as you can see, my loop locators are on each end of these, the main part of this simple track that I made for the video. They're there, but you can also select a clip and hit Control L and move the loop locators to the selected clip instead of just manually dragging. 
it's just a quicker way to get that done. One other thing uh, to take note of is I recorded this parameter automation clip after recording the MIDI notes and it's set up a new lane. Reason automatically created a new lane and recorded that filter A frequency adjustments here. Now if you'd like, let's F6 and go see this is the filter A frequency that has the automation you can tell by the green border and here we have the lane for that. So if I just delete that, and I'll delete that entire lane. I'll hit F6 and F7 so we can see the Maelstrom and this track for the Maelstrom. I will hit record. And as you can see, the lane is automatically created there in your automation clip. is being recorded. If for some reason you don't want a separate clip for that automation, one option that you do have within Reason is to go to the Options menu and select Record Automation into Note Clip. So then that way, I'll hit Record again. take note of that MIDI clip you can see a, that line for the parameter automation being recorded within that note clip. See this here I'll double click and F7 to maximize. Down here we now have filter A frequency parameter automation within the note clip itself. Now typically you'd want to record it separately because it just gives you more freedom when you're editing you have much more options that way but if for any reason you'd like to record that automation within the note clip just know that that is available so I'll escape out of there if you were to uh, I'll go to options and deselect that record automation into note clip and F6 and F7 I just want to try something here. I'm going to record again. So I just wanted to make the point here. We deselected the record automation into note clip. So that's why when we went back, we now have the lane formed and frequency A filter recorded on the new lane. I wanted to make the point that if you do record automation for the same uh, parameter, the lane is going to actually take control and the automation within the note clip will be disregarded. So you see we have filter A frequency here automation but if I escape out of there, Reason will actually use this because the separate lanes will be chosen over anything that's within the note clip. And I'll just close that out. And F7 to maximize our sequencer. And something basic that I didn't really touch on is if you'd like to create clips yourself manually, you can do this just simply uh, double click and on the second clip click hold and drag and of course your snap value is going to affect how that's drawn so I'll delete that choose bar 
double click and hold and you can see it jumps by bar I'll delete that you can also bring up the pencil tool by hitting W and draw it in but the uh, double clicking and holding is just a lot uh, simpler in my opinion to do so clips can also be resized just by grabbing either of these arrows you can move it in on either side if you note that I'll just control Z get that back if you take note of these upper corners there are no indicators there but when I resize this clip and move them in you can see that we now have these white indicators in each corner letting you know that there are MIDI events outside of the clip so if I double click on this clip you can see the notes are there now I'll escape out one option that you do have if you don't want to use those notes instead of double clicking selecting those then deleting selecting those on this side and deleting you can right click on the clip and choose crop events to clips and if you note now our indicators are gone and if I go into that clip the blue MIDI events are now gone the MIDI notes are gone this one is here because it actually starts within this clip it looks like it doesn't but it does so that's why it's there. If I move it just a touch, you can see it turns blue because it's outside of the clip. One other thing to be aware of is that you can go to, to the options menu and choose or deselect keep events in clip while editing. So then that way, if I double click, I'll bring up the pencil tool by hitting W, draw a clip. You can see the clip now adjusts automatically to the MIDI notes that I'm drawing in. And I'll escape out so you can see that. Reason will automatically expand the clip out if you deselect the keep events in clip while editing. And it's on by default. I'll just I went back in and turned it back on. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete those back out. Note you can also resize your clips even if you're in the editor by using the arrows in the clip overview area above the editor editing area. I'll escape out. They're the same as these and you have access to them even if you um, are working with the edit pane or edit mode. So clips can also be cut. I'll bring up the razor tool with R. You can cut and those cuts are going to be affected by your snap value. So even if I click in the center of this bar it's going to cut at the next transition for the next bar. So if I, I'll just take the snap off and you can see, then you can just freely cut wherever. One other useful tip or potentially useful is that you can, if you'd like to make a cut through all of the clips in your song, you can perform the cut at the ruler and it will then you can see we now have a cut in each clip below the ruler I hit Q for the selection tool and just delete this clip out we don't need that anymore so as you could just see clips you can select and hit delete control Z and bring that back you can also bring up the eraser tool with E and delete that out um, you can select, click and hold with the eraser tool and drag and select a group of clips and delete them out. Q 
queue for the selection tool. And lastly, I just want to talk about the, uh, well, the with the audio clip, let's expand that. You can, there's a level adjustment here on audio clips. You can move that up and down to adjust the volume on audio clips. That's not the same for MIDI, just for your audio. You then have a readout in the inspector of what the level is. So if you take note of the level in the inspector, it will change based on your adjustments on the clip. And of course, you can come in and um, put in a value manually, and it will then alter that as well. You can transpose audio from by selecting the clip and just note that you do have these options options up here that you can manually adjust as far as the fade in and out you can grab here and create a fade in on the back end you can create a fade out that will be a, constrained by your snap value so our snap value is currently to bar so if I then create a fade you see it jumps by bar. If you manually do these fades in the fader, it will disregard your snap value. One other item to talk about is uh, I'm going to Du duplicate this clip by hitting control D and I'll do one more copy and let's resize this one there's another option within the inspector when you're working with clips and that is if I select this clip here then hold down control and select that one you see we now have these equal signs. If they're not selected, if I just select one, they're not there. But um, so I'll select this first shorter one, control and select that. These match value symbols will, if you'd like for clips to be the same size, if I hit click this now, this first one will be the same size as the, the smaller one. Or actually, the smaller one be, became larger. I must have selected this one first. So let's see. So actually it's whichever clip is first in the front of the other will adjust the one behind it. Now match that length. And of course you've also got position here so you can move them to the same position. And I'll just delete these out. So I think that we've covered everything as far as clips are concerned. Um, yeah.